What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at pulling data out of a data frame with pandas. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at pulling data out of a data frame. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to start looking at pulling data out of our data frames in a bunch of different ways, finding different rows, finding different columns, finding all kinds of data about the stuff in the rows and the columns. It's going to be pretty cool. So in the last video, we looked at importing dog data from a CSV file, a comma separated value, a spreadsheet, basically. In this video, we're going to take that data and start pulling it out in different ways. So if you didn't see that video, check the playlist for that. And as always, the code for this video is in the pinned comment section below, as well as link to that playlist with all the videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So first, let me zoom in here real quickly and better. And you can see we've just imported pandas and NumPy and imported our CSV file. And you can see this is just some dog data that I used in an old project a while back. It's dog registrations from, I want to say like Pennsylvania or something. I don't know. You can see we've got the dog breed, the color, the name, and the owner's zip code. Just some dummy data for us to play around with. Okay, so let's start pulling data out of this thing. So how do we grab the first five rows? Well, we can use something called the head function. So that's just my underscore DF, the name of our data frame, dot head. And this is a function, so we need our brackets. Shift enter to run, and you can see, boom, zero through four, the first five things. Now we can pass any number into there and grab any number of the first whatever rows. So if we want to go my underscore df dot head, and let's say we want the first nine rows, we could just pass a nine through there. Shift enter to run this thing, and you see we get zero through eight, the first nine rows. Very cool. Likewise, we can grab the last five rows using the tail function. So let's go my underscore df dot tail, and this is also a function. And you see we get 14 through 18. This is one, two, three, four, five, the last five rows. So just like with the head command, we could pass any number into there and grab any number of the last rows. So let's go my underscore df dot tail. Let's say we want the last, I don't know, eight rows. You see 11 through 18, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very cool. Let's say we want to just get some information about our data frame. Hey, what's in there, you know? We can call the info function. So let's go my underscore df dot info. And you can see it returns all kinds of stuff. It says, hey, there's 19 entries from zero to 18 rows, 19. There are a total of four columns. Interesting. Here are the names of them, breed, color, dog name, owner, zip. And you can see, do they have stuff in them? Are they null or non-null? And you can see this column has 19 things in it. This one has 19. Uh oh, the dog name only has 18. That means something in one of those cells is null. So if we come back here and look, we could see in the dog name, sure enough, down here, this Cocker Spaniel, this blonde Cocker Spaniel has no name. It's just Nan. That means null, basically. So that's interesting to know. And we also get the data types of each column. These are all objects. The last one, the owner's zip code is an integer 64-bit. So that's kind of interesting. We can also get the shape of our data frame. So how many rows and columns are there? So let's go my underscore df dot shape. And this is not a function, so we just we don't put our brackets on this. And you can see there are 19 rows and four columns. Sometimes that's useful to know. We might want to know the number of dimensions in our data frame. So we can go my underscore df dot n d i m, short for n dimensions. And we have two dimensions in our data frame. Very cool. Uh, we can also get the column data types. Now it showed it up here in this info function, but we want it we might just want only that and we might want to return that and I don't know, do something with it. So we could call my underscore df dot d types. And again, this is not a function. So no brackets. And you can see the breed is object color is object dog name is object and owner zip is integer of 64 bits. Very cool. Okay, so that's just sort of pulling stuff out of there. Maybe we want more interesting data. Maybe we want statistics on our data we can use the describe function to get that. So let's go my underscore df dot describe. And that is a function, so you need your brackets there. And you can see it's only returning one column here because it's saying, oh, that one has numbers, I'll, I'll do stuff with it. And it's, it's giving us a count, the mean or average, the standard deviation, the min, the 25, 50, and 75% quartiles, and the max. 
Now, this is kind of stupid information because these are zip codes. We don't want to do statistical information on zip codes, but it's done that for us. Instead, we can grab information about regular columns. So let's come down here and let's grab information on our breed column. We do that just by my underscore DF. And here we can pass in brackets with the name of the column. So we could go breed dot describe. And here we get a count. There's 19 items in that column. 16 of them are unique. That's good to know. You know, we have 16 unique breeds in our list. The top one is mixed and it has two. So the rest are probably, you know, singles or close to it. And the name is breed and D type is object. And we could do this for all of our different columns. Let me just grab this. And instead of breed, let's, you know, get information on the color. You can see there's 19 colors, 10 of them are unique. The top one is white brown of frequency five. Very cool. So what else can we do? We've done breed. Let's do dog name. So we can pass in dog name. And these are just the columns of our data frame, right? So if you come up here to the very top, that's these things up here, breed, color, dog name, and owner, owner zip. So let's see, what do we got for dog name? 18 of them, 18 are unique. Top one is Charlie. Now you might think, is that alphabetical? No, it's just sort of the top one listed. It's the very first one, right? Because you can see we have one called Arrow. A is closer up to the top of alphabetical. So it's not doing alphabetical. It's just grabbing the first thing since they're all unique, right? There's no top one, basically. So, okay, that's cool. Now we've grabbed rows. We've done it using the location thing in the last video. And we've done it in this video with the head and the tail function. How do we grab individual columns? Well, there's several ways you can do that. First, you can use brackets and just call my underscore DEF quotation marks and just pass in the name of the column that we want. So dog name. And there we get a list of all those names. And you'll notice this is returning basically a panda series. So we have a video on panda series, a couple of videos back in the playlist. There's all kinds of things about that. We can now do all kinds of series type things to this information. Now I use single quotes here. You could just as easily use double quotes. Doesn't really matter at all. So that's using brackets. We can also use dot notation. So let's go my underscore DF dot dog name. And that returns the same thing. Finally, we can use a specific location to pull out a column. We just go my underscore DF dot I L O C use our brackets and think of this sort of like a slice, a Python slice. Let's say we want the very first column, the zeroth column. We can return that and we see cockapoo, German Shepherd, right? So if we come back up here and look, that first column is breed. If we want the second column, which is color, we would just pass a one. So it's sort of like a Python list. It starts at zero, one, two, three, and just do it like that. And there we go. Or, you know, if we want to grab the names, there's Charlie, Dakota, <laughs> Ike, and that's all there is to it. So all kinds of different ways that you can pull information, pull data, pull stuff out of your data frames. So you can pull up specific rows using head or tail or the location thing we looked at in the last video. You can pull up specific columns using this location thing or dot notation or, I don't know, let's call it bracket notation. Uh, you can describe your data get actual basic statistical things automatically done. Very cool, count uh, up here, mean, standard deviation, quartiles and stuff. Very cool, very easy to do. And uh, that's kind of all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codingme.com. I'll see you in the next video.